How's it going, everyone? This is Chris from the Commander Crew, and today, on an episode of From Pennies to Power, we have a brand new deck, a little spicy build. On Pennies to Power, we build decks for the more budgeted player. Most decks for Commander are getting way too expensive, and I don't want to pay the money for that. So I'm looking for decks that are much better on my budget, that can still win the game very easily. With my deck builds, I try to keep the budget as low as possible, while still seeking that optimized build. On today's episode, we are building Queen Marchesa. She is one in Marzu for a human assassin 3 3. She's got Death Touch and Haste, but when she enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. At the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent is the monarch, you put a 1 1 black assassin creature token on the battlefield with Death Touch and Haste. Now, we could go the monarch route, but we're going curses. I have always been enticed by curses, and I've always been playing enchantments already. It's quite often that there's very little mass destruction when it comes to enchantments, and maybe one or two targeted removal for enchantments. By enchanting our opponents, we can slow them down and ensure they struggle to get the victory, and if the curses don't take over their minds, we will have an army bring them down. First, we start with some mana acceleration through some mana rocks. When playing Mardu, it can be quite difficult to accelerate your board state, so here we want to seek out mana rocks that cost either 1 or 2 mana to ensure we have the proper curve. We have Arcane Signet to mana fix on demand, Wayfarer's Bobble to help search up a specific land we need, and then Soul Ring to help push the board quickly so there is nothing more satisfying than a turn 1 Soul Ring. To round out the rocks, we have Talisman of Aaraki and Talisman of Conviction, then both Orzhov Signet and Boros Signet. I have not chosen any Rakdos colored rocks, as white is a primary color within this deck. To ensure we are able to get all the curses on the board, we need to set up the proper defenses and create a strong protection field. Suppression field will slow down activated abilities, Aura of Silence will slow down artifacts coming into play with a potential scare tactic with the removal, and then Authority of Consoles to slow down mass creature builds. Ghostly Prison and Sphere of Safety are huge to include to slow down the opponents from attacking with multiple creatures at once without having enough mana. Island of Rhetoric to stop the Storm players from quickly winning. A great offense can be a great defense. To help dig in the deck, we need to have several draw options. Phyrexian Arena will help gain an extra card each turn at the cost of one life. Painful Truce will gain upwards of three cards for three mana, which is a solid value. And Sign and Blood will also keep a good value for the import for card draw. Saram Senior Edificer and Mesa Enchantress will give us a card draw advantage for every aura that we cast. And to finish off the draw, we have Faithful Suiting, which is always a great auto-include if you're playing red. Now it's always best to have tutors in your deck. On a budget, it can be quite difficult sometimes to get the right tutors, because they're always at a higher CMC when you want to play on a budget, but it's still important to have the right key pieces found at the right point in your game. Eliad's Pilgrim and Idyllic Tutor both cost 3 mana. Eliad's Pilgrim is a creature, but both will search for an enchantment card, in this case, either an aura or an enchantment card, and put it into your hand. One of the best tutors you can have is Diabolic Tutor. It's two for black black, sorcery speed, search for your card, any card that that, and put it into your hand. This is a phenomenal card to include if you are playing black, but it will allow you to search for any card at all. To round out the tutors, we have Plea for Guidance and Three Dreams, both of which will help you search for specific aura cards. Plea for Guidance is five and a white, it will help you search for two enchantment cards you reveal them and put in your hand, Three Dreams for four and a white will help you search for three aura cards with different names and put them into your hand. Now you also want to include some instant hits of targeted removal. At any point in the game, certain things become an issue and you want to be sure to respond to them at the right time. We have Chaos Warp that can target any permanent and shuffle it back into the owner's library. Source the Plowshare which will exile a target creature and return to Dust which can exile up to two Artifacts and enchantments if you play it during your main phase, and if not, you can still exile one artifact in the Exiling or shuffling back in the library is a huge key aspect to get rid of a troublesome target. Now we're going to want to get as much value as possible with each enchantment that we cast. Doomwake Giant, when it enters, is a 4 6 creature, but it'll give all your creatures, your opponent's control, minus 1, minus 1. And if you cast any additional enchantments, they'll additionally get more minus 1, minus 1 counters. This can definitely help out drop the entire board for your opponents. We have Sigil of the Empty Throne, which will create a 4 4 White Angel with Flying on the battlefield for each enchantment, 
a Johnny's Chosen, which will create a 2-2 white hat token, an Archon of Sun's Grace, which will also give a Pegasus on the battlefield that will also have lifelink if you would have Archon on the battlefield as well. Some creatures give the deck even more value. A Cursed Witch flips into a curse, cost reduction for a player, and additionally loses them life and we gain. Bitterheart Witch will let you tutor for a specific curse and attach it directly to a player when it dies. This is a key card to the deck, being able to search for any specific curse and attach it right to your opponent. Burnish Heart will help you ramp even further, and Starfield Mystic will help reduce the cost of all of your enchantments. Dictate of Erebos is a world enchantment that whenever a creature you control were to die, each opponent will also sacrifice a creature. Starfield and Nyx for Fallen and White. At the beginning of your keep, you get to return a target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's phenomenal, so every single turn you can have an aura come back to your battlefield. And as long as you control 5 or more enchantments, each other non-aura enchantment you control is a creature with base power and toughness equal to the converted mana cost. This can surprise your opponent by having surprisingly a few extra creatures on the board to help push it through. And then lastly, Painful Quandary, 3 black black. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player will lose 5 life unless he or she discards a card. This can really slow down your opponent from playing multiple spells in a single turn. Fountain Watch is a 2-4 creature that costs 3 white white, which gives all your artifacts and enchantments hexproof, so they can't be the target of spells or abilities. Approach of the Second Sun is a great way to win the game out of the blue without anyone ever expecting it. It's 6 and a white, and if you Approach of the Sun was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Sun, you win the game. That's pretty epic, and it can actually go off pretty well and many times off in Otherwise, you put Approach of the Second Sun into the 7th card from the top of your library and you gain 7 life. If anything, 7 mana, 7 life, it doesn't sound that great, but it can help out a lot. Blasphemous Act of 8 and a red, which can reduce the cost by 1 for each creature in the battlefield, will deal 13 damage to each creature. Generally, this is going to wipe the entire board. And then End Hostilities for 3 white white destroys all creatures and all permits attached to that creature. This can get rid of a lot of things on the board. Generally, you have to figure that each opponent's going to have auras and artifact equipments to their creatures. This way, you can get rid of all of it in one single swing. When your deck focuses on specific enchantments setting up the board, you want to ensure you're able to bring back them, even if they are destroyed. Open the vaults can hit your opponents as well, but it will bring back all the enchantments in your graveyard back to the field. Crystal Chimes will allow you to leave a curse on the field when needed. Sun Titan will not only bring back enchantments, it can bring back any permanent with convert them in cost 3 or less. And the last bit of recursion is Auromancer, which is a creature, but it does allow you to bring any enchantment back from your graveyard to your hand. Now let's get into those curses. Let's start with the red curses first. We have Curse of the Nightly Hunt for two and a red, Enchanted Player. All their creatures must attack each turn if able. This can definitely change the game up a lot. Being able to have to always attack changes to how your opponents will play their creatures. Curse of Stalked Prey for one and a red. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to an Enchanted Player, you put a 1-1 counter. That makes people want to attack that player, very similar to Curse of Iperlins, when whenever that player is attacked, you or that player will create a gold token. Getting a little bit of extra mana ramp out of a gold token is pretty epic, so keep an eye out for this one. Then we have Curse of the Pierced Heart for one and a red, and at the beginning of their upkeep, they take a damage. That one damage can add up over the game. Curse of Bloodletting, three red red, deals double damage to that player if anything were to hit that player. That is huge. So definitely keep an eye out for this one. And for the last red curse, we have Curse of Chaos with two and a red. Whenever a player attacks an enchanted player with one or more creatures, that attacking player may discard a card. If that player does, he or she draws a card. A little bit of rummaging can go a long way, and some people will want to get rid of those dead cards and draw some good stuff. And now for the white curses. There may not be that as many, but they still do a lot of damage. Curse of Exhaustion, two white white. Enchanted player can't cast more than one spell each turn. This can be huge for a certain player on the battlefield when they're trying to play multiple spells at a single turn. Overwhelming Splendor for 6 white white. This may be probably one of the best curses in the entire deck. I've seen a lot of players just completely scoop the minute this is played on the field. Creatures Enchanted Player controls lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. This can pretty much make everything a little 1-1. One, one. An Enchanted Player can't activate abilities that aren't man abilities or loyalty abilities. This is huge. Look out for this if the player is going too crazy. Curse of the Forsaken for two and a white. Enchanted player. Whenever a creature attacks Enchanted player, its controller gains life. A little bit of extra life. Very similar to Curse of Vitality. Two and a white. Whenever Enchanted player is attacked, you gain two life. Each opponent attacking their player does the same. 
And lastly, we have the Black Curses. Curse of Fool's Wisdom for Black Black. Whenever a pretender player draws a card, they lose 2 life and you gain 2 life. And it also has madness for 3 and a black. It can come in at some point. But being able to pick cast this at some point when a player is drawing a lot of cards, this can do a lot of damage. Curse of Misfortunes for 4 and a black. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may search your library for a curse card that player does not have the same name and attach to that player. This basically means you get 1 curse and 2 and 3 and 4. And this keeps going and going the longer the game goes. We have Curse of Thirst for 4 in the black. At the beginning of Enchanted Player's upkeep, it deals damage equal to the number of curses attached to him or her. This can actually start adding up pretty quickly towards the end of the game. Curse of Death Soul, 3 black black. All creatures in Enchanted Player controls get minus 1, minus 1. And if you have something up curse out there that gives everything makes it a 1-1, one, one, this basically means all their creatures are dead. Curse of Oblivion for 3 in the black. At the beginning of a change of player's upkeep, that player exiles two cards from his or her graveyard. This can definitely slow down that player who likes to play a little bit of recursion over and over. Curse of Vengeance for single black. Whenever a change of player casts a spell, you put a spike counter on it. Whenever a change of player loses the game, you gain X life, draw X cards, where X is the number of spike counters on Curse of Vengeance. This is a good early curse because it can get out of hand pretty quickly, and if that opponent were to die, you can potentially draw a lot of cards. Curse of Shallow Graves, two and a black. Whenever a player attacks and chant a player with one or more creatures, that attacking player may put a 2-2 black zombie creature on the battlefield tap. A little bit of extra creatures can definitely help out. And then we have Torment of Scarabs with 3 and a black. At the beginning of a chant of player's upkeep, that player loses 3 life unless he or she sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. This can definitely help out in the long run. And that wraps up Queen Marchesa, Cursed by a Monarch. I definitely am enjoying this deck. I hope that you enjoyed the deck tech as well. Please remember, like, subscribe, hit that little bell notification so you can keep following the videos. This is just one of the many decks I will be going over. Play it online. I definitely love this deck. Curses are here to stay. Peace.